and this is my Slovak experience. Hello everyone, my today's guest is Olga Rosell. Olga is a Russian humanitarian and a community organizer. She experienced the diplomatic life and she's a member of the International Women's Club of Bratislava. She landed in Slovakia temporarily due to her husband's job and she knows that she's going to move on at one point. But in the meantime, you will hear how she keeps herself busy trying to help the local community and raise awareness about the issues she believes in. Olga is the founder also of the We Foodie Facebook group that counts thousands of members focused on discovering the best ethnic food in Slovakia. So, if you're interested to hear more, let's go. Olga Rosell. Enjoy. So, I'm here with uh, Olga Rosell. So, Olga, welcome to my Slovak experience. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. So, uh, so you are originally from Russia, right? But yeah. that's not the only place you've been in the world, I learned. So, tell me something about your story. So, and what actually took you to Slovakia? So, why you're here and why you're in Slovakia? I was raised uh, in Russia and then um, I moved... Um, 15 years ago to the US for family reasons and then uh, since that time I've been traveling all around the world and I lived in uh, three countries and visited maybe 15 or 16 countries so wow. far. The only place that I've never been is uh, Africa. I've been to South Korea, I lived in Central Asia, in Uzbekistan, then I, in Poland for three years, Warsaw, and of course, US, mm -hmm. where I traveled uh, pretty much uh, everywhere from and back, and north and uh, south. Yeah. That's it. And, uh, and what took you here then to Slovakia? So what uh, was the reason you are in this country? Well, it's just destiny. I had to be here, I guess, <laughs> by Providence, and I arrived one year ago. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy that I'm here. And um, so, when when uh, maybe if you if you can go back one year ago when you came first time, can you tell me about your first impressions of uh, Slovakia? So, what you thought when you came here, or what did you see? Because I studied Slovak for one year in Washington DC before okay. I arrived, uh, so I already had uh, some um, ideas, expectations about Slovakia. I wanted to try, of course, uh, some halushki <laughs> with bacon, because I was told by my uh, Slovak teacher that uh, it was created by the Italian uh, chef, actually. Halushki? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's why I wanted to try it, uh, and I thought it's like it should be really amazing. And I tried it; it's it's good. And then, of course, I I learned or read in my study book uh, that uh, I should go to the castle and uh, uh, have some wine in the old uh, cellar and listen to the uh, Roma music. Mm -hmm and dance on the Roman music, so I, I had a really romantic expectation about Slovakia. But when I arrived, uh, and I, I was the only one who was looking for uh, wine cellars and uh, Roma music in whole Slovakia. Nana really cared about it as much as I did. Mm -hmm. I actually did find it at some point. Uh, Maybe already in two months, I knew several wineries around the Bratislava. Okay. I found uh, all uh, popular places to listen and dance in okay. Bratislava, as well as uh, good food. But with food, of course, my journey started in January when I uh, founded uh, the Foodie Group. Okay. Uh, and the uh, I had to go to the restaurants every week to discover all the hidden gems in uh, Bratislava. 
So like, so you, you founded a group that is like a Facebook group? Yeah, just a Facebook uh, yeah. group with minimum investment possible. But now from February it reached uh, 1,300. 1,300 yeah, people? Yes. Uh, and this is more uh, for food, so you're sharing places to go, right? In, uh, yes. And I have uh, members uh, in uh, Washington DC, Central Asia, Russia, Europe, mm -hmm. uh, Paris, Vienna, and Slovakia. Yeah. So uh, and Korea, Korea as well, because I have some uh, friends from Asia that I had. And, and why did you found it? Like the reason was because there was, you know, the, it's uh, never so much advertised where to go to eat, or it's uh, so. What what brought you to found the foodie group after so? Sometime you are All here. All advertised places seem to be upscale or pricey, and uh, I wanted to know maybe there is something else mm -hmm. here than a uh, four restaurant or or main uh, main restaurants that we all usually re read about uh, in the tour yeah. magazine. When you arrive, right, you get a lot of flyers, and when there are just full of uh, traditional expensive places I wanted to know what uh, people read really eat here okay and I wanted to hear it from people I didn't want to read it from uh, websites and I didn't want even to follow some recommendations right okay from official institutions so I decided to hear people's voice and I do it every week. Uh, so I go to the restaurants people choose every week. If you can tell me what's the most remarkable food you experience in Slovakia, right? We, since you have, uh, you know, the, the group, you go around, you try many places. So what's different than usual? Slovak dish, my favorite Slovak dish is Zemlovka. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of uh, fruits and uh, cottage cheese. Yes. And egg uh, souffle, I believe. But I never tried it at home. But and it's it's something that you you don't usually find in the restaurant, right? I found it in a restaurant. Okay. Close to close to the river bank, actually. Okay. Uribaka serves amazing. Uh, Slovak food, but my group is uh, not only about Slovak food. We go to hidden uh, gems of Bratislava. Mm -hmm. Usually uh, the restaurants are run uh, by foreigners. Okay. And they offer ethnic food from uh, Persian, Egyptian, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, Thai, Indonesian. And do you think that ma many of these are created by, uh, like, uh, this kind of business are started by foreigners coming to Slovakia and uh, sharing their food, or mostly Slovaks that they want to reproduce? I had the chance to meet the owners of these uh, restaurants, and usually uh, they are fa uh, coming from uh, different countries okay. for different reasons, sometimes work, sometimes uh, family. For example, Korean restaurant uh, was founded uh, by the worker who wanted to have Korean food mm -hmm. and he told me that he decided to open it as Latvitsky because it was close to Zhlina, right? Okay. Where Kia is. They have all uh, personal stories but uh, Slovakia is experiencing right now culinary boom thanks to people who come to Slovakia from different countries mm -hmm. and I think they have to benefit it from it and then we have to go and try new food even if it sounds uh, uh, totally uh, un, uh, you know inedible to them yeah. like grasshoppers <laughs> no, or apparently inedible. I guess they might be good right if you taste them I did taste them and I encourage uh, everyone uh, open uh, their taste buds right and try, and try yeah. it but I did uh, try it uh, with Thai beer, but I already knew okay. from my uh, experience uh, in Washington, D.C. Because, of course, when I arrived from D.C., I realized uh, that there are many 
interesting restaurants uh, around, but people just don't go there. And then at some point they just close because they cannot stay in business and compete with uh, traditional uh, beer pubs. Yes. This was also the reason why I wanted to go and explore mm-hmm. that restaurant and support them. Give them uh, some marketing that they don't really have. Mm-hmm. And so far, it was a uh, great So supporting experience. means to share that there are more of these places and so more people, people can them. go there. Yeah. So I do bring people uh, to the restaurants that not many uh, locals know. And it's already up to the restaurant if we can keep the clients or not. So, of course, uh, if uh, the restaurant uh, doesn't serve uh, good food, no market can help them, right? They yes. have to yeah. also serve fast uh, food that people would like yes. after they try it once and then uh, they would come back again to, and then they would be their uh, clients. Uh, I think there are places where if the food is good, more people go because you naturally want. Sometimes it's in a, your inner circle. So in your case, perhaps you, your audience is the international uh, and expats in, in Bratislava, right? But the food is an inner circle of friends. Because mm-hmm. it started from a friends community, right? And then uh, it's growing uh, because the people who are not my friends, they still want to know where my f- group goes and they still actually come uh, to the lunches mm-hmm. with me. So the invitation is to everyone to not only check out your group but also to meet if it's possible because it's good for you know meeting and networking and sharing. Yeah, some people come uh, for language practice if they want to improve their language or if they want to speak a different language. Of course, like common language is I think English. Yeah. But you still sometimes if you have more than two of. Uh, Oh, uh, one know, nationality. Uh, they yeah. switch to their preferred language automatically. So how many languages do you speak? Uh, five. So Russian, English, a bit of Slovak. Russian, English, uh, Slovak, Polish, German. Okay. So that's our the availability as well to right. and <laughs> for a conversation. I work in Poland, that's why I, I have actually a proficient uh, mm-hmm. level in Polish. This really interferes with my Slovak proficiency. Yeah. And how is your Slovak? Like from a Russian perspective, is it uh, easy to learn or? No, it's too hard. It took me one year to be uh, fluent in Slovak and then uh, one more year to get uh, functional. But I still, of course, uh, sound uh, like uh, not even Russian, but more like Russian Polish mm-hmm. speaker. Okay. Because I tend to use uh, Polish words more than my Russian words because I know that okay that word is Russian for sure so I will not use it in my Slovak so I borrow it from Polish okay that's why I sound sometimes <laughs> like a mister <laughs> <laughs> from uh, high Tatry from the Slovak Polish border so, but it's kind of um, close close uh, region right yeah everyone uh, is uh, different mm-hmm. but close like and this makes it so beautiful and rich right so uh, this region uh, from the north to the mm-hmm. south uh, they are, they're very close to each other but they still preserve their identity mm-hmm. and um, charm right and um, what uh, what did you do you like about Slovakia in general? Is there anything? I like I like people in, who live in Slovakia. I met amazing people due to my work um, uh, at a charity committee of the International Women Club of Bratislava. Mm-hmm. I'm I met. Uh, Mothers of artistic children who founded the organization from zero and had courage to speak up about these problems. Mm-hmm. And now, thanks to them, these mothers, the whole Bratislava is coming to, to her center and uh, get help uh, and get uh, their children integrated into the normal uh, schools. Mm-hmm. I met uh, the directors of 
centers for disabled people, mentally disabled and physically disabled, orphans. Of course, I, I met amazing uh, people uh, in business, right? Who make uh, Bratislava better and better every day. And uh, so, so you you have uh, some kind of activities into uh, charity and to you know trying to help the community, right? It's very uh, so. Tell common, me more about right, it. It's very common, um, in my opinion, uh, to get involved in the charity uh, and fundraise and uh, anywhere I live because you really want to reach out to the local community and uh, you do not want to be just a temporary guest here. You also want to make some change for better. Mm -hmm. And I want to leave uh, Bratislava a better place than it was before I arrived, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's a bit ambitious, but uh, I'm very serious about it. And I hope that my uh, small uh, part uh, and role uh, in uh, the charity fundraising uh, is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I already see the difference. And, and uh, club's activity is so great. Uh, last year, uh, we uh, financed uh, washing machines for for the Roma settlements. Okay. There is no uh, sewage system or any kind of laundromats like you would expect to see uh, in the States. Mm -hmm. And uh, the organization that uh, received this fund sent us pictures with kids so looking how their laundry is clean mm -hmm. thanks to that machine. Mm -hmm. First time in their life. Of course, that is amazing and rewarding. So basically, part of um, your activities is to gather funds, right? So to also raise awareness about the needs. Yes, it's a team uh, uh, team member. I do participate mm -hmm. and uh, devote my time and uh, ideas. And for example, we will be a charity Christmas Bazaar at Star Tushnitsa because every single uh, coin, uh, dime you spend there will go directly to the Slovak charity. So it's your chance to give back to the Slovak local community. Yeah. Not just come to work, make money and then go home, but while you're here, also contribute to the local community. Mm -hmm. Uh, when, whoever I interviewed so far, either you know they either have a family here or they chose to live here without any time limit. Let's say, right? So you're saying there are also those kind of uh, foreigners that they come that they are for sure know that they will live at one point in the country, but in, during the time you're here, you shouldn't only just live in your kind of bubble of business or need or whatever, but just trying also to help the community since you're here and since you perhaps have the possibilities for it, right? Right, because the, all newcomers, they always see something to be improved and they have a zeal to do it. Mm -hmm. Why not? Plus, uh, for example, uh, for this bazaar, you don't need anything, right? Just uh, maybe one, two hours of your time mm -hmm. and pleasant shopping experience, right? And uh, But the scale of that is huge, mm -hmm. right? That, that particular penny you spend will contribute to the big pool. Yeah. And uh, how do you... Um, so, uh, uh, do you organize the whole event or you are just collaborating with... Uh, that, uh, the biggest uh, fundraising event in Slovakia is difficult to organize by one person. Yeah, no, so, uh, there is a whole team, uh, whole team uh, directed by uh, the president of a club. Mm -hmm. Susan van der Helm and the bazaar coordinator is Jennifer Sturgeon. Mm -hmm. uh, they are driving force behind this event. And of course, uh, the team uh, consists of like 15 or 16 uh, volunteers. Oh. So it's huge indeed. Uh, and that one day, during that day, uh, uh, the organization raises about uh, 100,000 uh, euros just for one thing wow. and that uh, funds when uh, are allocated to the different applicants mm -hmm. all around Slovakia but it has to be Slovak uh, organization mm -hmm. charity organization 
and uh, I, I, I don't know why, uh, what are the real reasons, but why, why do you think someone should dedicate time and some of their money for it, right? What's the motivation you sh should have? Or I think everyone has its own experience, but mm -hmm. um, main thing um, that people uh, face that problems themselves, right? Because human beings are quite selfish, let's face it, mm -hmm. right? So, Everyone who gets involved in uh, this uh, altruistic work mm -hmm. at some point of their life faced the same uh, difficulties and hardships that other people are facing right now. So, as for me, yes, I, for example, um, was disabled for six months, right? I had uh, no hand, literally, after my surgery. Mm -hmm. And I realized how difficult it is for a person uh, to live without uh, your hand. That's why I'm a little bit um, biased helping uh, organizations with disab disabilities. I mean, organizations that help people mm -hmm. with disabilities. That's why I also support this idea of uh, black box for uh, experiencing uh, blindness. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the more people uh, actually experience how hard it is to live with disabilities, uh, the more they will be uh, supportive when they are active themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That's why if you are active and uh, you are blessed to be healthy and have uh, two hands and two yeah. legs, and uh, working brains, right? Yeah. You really have to uh, use it yeah. in a good way. Not only for uh, your um, work and income, but you also have to help uh, someone who doesn't have the same uh, uh, blessings as you, yeah. right? I mean, there is actually no apparent merit in being what we are right then like we are born where we are born we have capabilities that we have and we didn't choose that but we just happen to be born in that situation so uh, that's actually the point like someone is born in one way somebody is another way so if we are able instead to support and help that's actually um uh, i think one, one part of the um, engagement into charity perhaps or into at least you know with volunteer work or with our time is also that the more you help the more you enter into this kind of mindset and you put down the shoes of a different perspective so you're even more open right and more open-minded in this to understand variety and uh, differences uh, do, do you think the since you, you have some kind of you know knowledge of this particular area do you think that the, um, who is has different abilities, perhaps. I don't really like the type of di di these abilities, more like in there is nothing less, right? It's just a different kind of ability. So, but do you think they have, um, how, how is the life of uh, this kind of group of people in, in Slovakia? So is there is a lot of work to do yet, right? The country and the government, or I don't know. What's your opinion? In my opinion, um, the station is, of course, uh, uh, could be improved any time. <laughs> There's always room uh, for perfection. Yeah. But in compared, of course, uh, with the US, uh, Slovakia needs to enforce uh, strict regulations about uh, disability access. Mm -hmm. Because till now, unfortunately, we can see that there is no really access to bus stops. Mm -hmm what you would want in this station. And of course, there are not uh, many sidewalks, not to mention uh, um, cable stones in Old Town. I discovered that apparently cable stones in Old Town can give uh, a muscle ache to the people on the wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. And I never even thought about it till I actually uh, you know, spoke to the people with these problems. Mm -hmm. But of course, we cannot really like change right now all the stones in all town, right? It's a part of the inheritance, right? So there should be always a middle ground between change and uh, progress. Tell me more about your Slovak experience, right? So what's the uh, what's your relationship with the 
uh, Slovaks and uh, you know Slovak culture and tradition. <laughs> no, of, of course, uh, because I speak with a, uh, a heavy Russian accent, uh, I always have to uh, go through this experience with some uh, prism. <laughs> People uh, know uh, Russian, so I'm, I do feel uh, uh, that I can understand the culture better because uh, people know my language, they know who, where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. But of course, I, at the same time, I have to deal with stereotypes about me that I have to break uh, on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, I do not buy porcelain and um, ceramics or crystals in the, um, huge numbers as a uh, you know, some Russian tourists do. Mm. Um, I do try not to wear a lot of show coats. <laughs> so, yes. But I still cannot hide this. So when I'm in Slovakia, I I am more than ever reminded that I'm Russian. Mm -hmm. And while in the US, I don't even notice that I, I am different because the U.S. is a country of immigrants. That's why everyone has some kind of accent, and no one even think, no one thinks uh, what kind of accent you have. Mm -hmm. Here, of course, uh, I hear my native language more often than in the States. At the same time, uh, I also like get offered like a vodka all of a sudden while I don't <laughs> drink vodka. Right, but people assume that I like vodka and they give me vodka and I... Alright, great. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the best uh, Slovak experience uh, maybe was uh, strolling around uh, and um, uh, kind of, you know, going on little trips to small towns, mm -hmm. like, like uh, Trenčín or Bojnice, Košice, mm -hmm. Trnava, and uh, other small towns in the, the mountains. And it's easy because uh, it's really close by car. You yeah. can cross, I crossed uh, Slovakia maybe in four hours by car. And I travel all around Slovakia and saw amazing wineries, castles, and uh, different, uh, of course, rivers, right? Slovakia is famous for the Vach River, mm -hmm. nature. It's amazing. And, uh... and I actually hiked there. Uh, in Marianka as well, that was an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, but on the other hand, uh, with all my travels and um, uh, different mm -hmm. uh, culture experiences, I realized the important thing that you have to re preserve your own identity. Mm -hmm. You have to keep uh, and uh, cherish your individuality because it's very easy to lose it. Mm -hmm. Very easy. Very easy to lose your accent, actually, <laughs> and um, forget about your your heritage. Very easy. That's why sometimes I do get uh, into the mood of uh, becoming even too Russian when I used to be. <laughs> it, I think it's very important. Yeah. That's why I'm also like keeping in touch with the Russian community in Britain. Slava, a Russian-speaking community in Bratislava, and uh, try to attend as many uh, cultural events mm -hmm. as possible. Emma, you know, uh, you said you, you were in the U.S., you were living in Poland, and now in Slovakia, in you were from yeah. Russia, so basically in Central Asia as well, so uh, at the end, uh, are you still only Russian? That's a question. Or you are a mixture of cultures? Who right. is Olga? Exactly. Um, this is just me. In uh, every culture and every country I lived, uh, gave me a new life. Mm -hmm. It's like 
dying and then uh, uh, being born again. Yes. Every time when I come to a new country, I always uh, rediscover myself. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, maybe, you know, considering Slovakia, when, what will you would change about this country? If you could, like, if you would have your magic wand and you, uh, there is one thing that still has to be changed. Well, I would definitely uh, uh, change a bit graf 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 graffiti per, uh, policy mm -hmm. here because some graffitis are really like, but other graffitis are on the abandoned buildings and then mm -hmm. they are in the center of Bratislava. In my opinion, uh, it would be much better. It would be a little bit less, right? So to just project a much uh, neater uh, image mm -hmm. of a city. But it could be my personal opinion. But basically the purpose is... Uh, I, I still think that uh, some uh, centrally located uh, squares mm -hmm. need to be renovated. Like, Kamenina uh, Mestia really has to be improved. It's in downtown, uh, and um, when you arrive uh, as a tourist, this is the first grocery store, I think, at Lidl and uh, yeah. Tesco uh, that people see. That's why uh, sometimes uh, people come back uh, from Bratislava with the impression that uh, it was not a very well-kept city, right? That's, but it's very easy fix, right? And Hlavna Stanica also needs to be improved, in my opinion. And I believe that maybe uh, in a year or so, it will be already brushed up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. I hear many people talk about it. So it's not just my opinion. Everything else, I think, is great. And uh, it should be preserved, maybe, as well. Because uh, old town really needs to be preserved. I see uh, skyscrapers appearing in some uh, areas, mm -hmm. right? Uh, towers. But, and I like it actually, I like this architecture style, but maybe it should be moved to a different location, so okay. there would be more modern buildings in town to provide better office. Yeah. But you still have to preserve your charm, free for buildings. I don't know, but it's up again to the locals, you know, as a foreigner, I cannot really influence it. It's a, it's a decision. I mean, you have a certain, the, you know, you as foreigner, as many others, right, that we are here, we are also part of the whole experience, right? So. Uh, we what we see, feedback. everybody sees. Uh, so <laughs> you know, it's not. I don't think there is a different opinion between a Slovak and a foreigner in many things. Like what is objectively beautiful is beautiful. What looks dirty is dirty. What look, what's looks comfortable is comfortable, right? So uh, graffiti, as you say, if it's not done properly, it's objectively ugly generally. So you know. No, of course, also like parking mm -hmm. also needs to be changed a little bit. I think. Parking is a problem in the old town. But there are many garages, right? That's mm -hmm. why I don't sometimes understand why if it, it's still a problem. But it's just very expensive, I think. Maybe that's why. Depends on the price as well, probably. Yeah, and in it many is like cases. five euros per hour in the center, mm -hmm. which is quite expensive, I think. But again, in the end, it's the same thing. Like you still have to pay a mm. lot for parking. I would buy, I would add more option to go by bike myself, like, you know, to really, I, I hear a lot of times where, yeah, you shouldn't go by bike around Bratislava because it's dangerous. I would actually make it safe so that then you don't need parking, right? You just can go out and with a bicycle. No, trams, I like trams as well. Mm -hmm. I like tram system here. And bus system is quite uh, good. But when I arrived, of course, I, I, got, I got lost with uh, bars, uh, bus mm -hmm. tickets. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult for me to figure out how the machine works. Okay. Because <laughs> it was really different from anything I saw. Because I believe in uh, 
Polish ticket machines worked somehow difficult, different. So you like your experience from Poland, you, you had more complexity in dealing with the buses and travels. Right. No, actually, Warsaw also has very good infra- infrastructure, mm-hmm. like public tra- transport uh, infra- infrastructure. But every every just country is very different in these small, uh, simple things. And you would think in uh, the age of globalization, everything should be unified. Mm-hmm. But uh, to be honest, any time when I uh, arrive in a country, the main problem is uh, uh, parking. Yeah. And how and, and trying to figure out uh, rules about how to uh, play for park for yeah. parking. All right. Cool. So thank, thank you, you Olga much. for sharing. And uh, yeah, come again from when you will have a next uh, Facebook group or next initiative. I'm always happy to Adiós. to share. Thank you. Ciao. You can listen to My Slovak Experience directly on the website myslovakexperience.com or subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher or Tuning Radio or you can also find it and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you everyone for listening to My Slovak Experience. See you at the next interview. Till then, have fun, share and enjoy.